The UAE government announces a new working week of four and a half days and a shift of the weekend to Saturday, Sunday. What will this mean for employers, investors, trade partners, and all those who live, work, and visit the UAE? You're listening to the Business Extra podcast coming from the National in Abu Dhabi. I'm Mustafa Al Rawi, Assistant Editor in Chief. like this show, please do subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your audio content. With me is my co-host, Kelsey Warner. Hi, Kelsey. Hey, Mustafa. So it's good to have an an important discussion about some big news that has broken today, Um, not just for the UAE, the people that live here and work here, but also for people around the world, which is that the weekend and the work week is changing in the UAE from January 1st, 2022. We're going to a four and a half day work week. We're going to a Saturday, Sunday weekend. Now, this is for government workers, to be specific. Federal government workers plus Dubai and Abu Dhabi government workers confirmed. Schools will come into line with this new weekend change. Um, Also, the work week for the government will end on Friday at uh, 12 noon. So that's four and a half days. So for investors looking at markets in the UAE, those around the region, around the world, the trade partners also with the UAE, uh, multinationals that are employers here, as well as elsewhere in the region, um, tourism, travel, as well as education. Um, all of this is being impacted by this this really, really big change. Of course, to set the scene, uh, 15 years ago, we moved to a Friday-Saturday weekend. And seven years before that, we moved to a, to have actually a Thursday-Friday weekend. So quick history lesson. Thank you, Mr. You're, you're welcome. So <laughs> Um, that's it in a nutshell. That's the big news. That's why we're here to unpack this and break it down. Those are top, those are the top bullet points. But to me, the headline is the UAE embraces hybrid work and edges closer to the long, elusive four-day work week that we've been talking about now for almost a decade, the shift to the four-and-a-half-day work week. Really, I think, an exciting move for government workers right now. I think the private sector now is sitting on the edge of their seat to see if we, too, will fall in line. But there's been pilot projects happening all over the world for the last few years to see the viability of the four-day work week. Uh, Friday will end, the workday will end at noon, beginning January 1st. Uh, It's an exciting, it's an exciting move. The UAE just kind of went for it. Well, I'll give you more history, forgive me. Um, (laughs) But uh, earlier this year, uh, there was a lot of speculation this was going to happen. Right. Um, And actually there was, uh, which doesn't often happen, an actual official denial that the, new, that the the weekend was going to change. And this was, in, you know, more than six months ago now. Uh, but at the time when there was a lot of noise around it, there was this, this feeling that um, there could be a huge economic boost, whether through savings or productivity from making such a change to align the UAE with, with global markets. So, you know, around the region, um, it, it may be that, you know, Friday is the, is the standard, you know, weekend day. Um, but, in Europe, in the US, in Asia, and we are becoming a more interconnected world. And as to your point about remote working, hybrid working, the pandemic has accelerated that, if you excuse the cliche. Sure. And so Friday is being suggested, by, according to the announcement, being suggested as a work from home day for government employees. Friday, take a half day and then starting at 1.30 p.m. will be prayer time and sermons. So this idea that uh, work from home has been wholesale embraced really by public policy by the UAE government but also part of the announcement really there is this hybrid thing going on too with this will boost our global competitiveness but also it really embraces this idea of flexibility and well-being and employee retention employee happiness so i i want to pick up on that because these are themes that have been going around for a while you know ever since we were all at home uh, for much of 2020 during the pandemic but if, if we if we kind of and 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 that's the the reasons behind it. But if I if I come back and and a lot of our audience they'll either be you know thinking if they're in the private sector what does this mean for us from January first, um, and you know there will be parents saying okay I need to think about schools what's happening because actually in the UAE schools are going to go back January second and now January second is actually a public holiday. It's a Sunday. It is. So <laughs> so we have one more day to to work this out. Um, but. There, there will be a lot happening over the next few weeks. So just to make that clear, the private sector doesn't have to uh, mimic the public sector. But given that, you would expect that financial, the financial sector would, will fall into line with, with what the government's doing. You'd, you'd expect that, but it's not confirmed. 
then it would make sense for the for the private sector to follow as well to match up. And actually, you've seen the last few years in terms of public sector, private sector holidays. Right. They have been matching up. They have. For a number of reasons. But we're not making any predictions right now. I, I, I think we can make a prediction that at some point in 2022, everybody will be aligned. We'll fall, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, be, we'll fall in line. But we have, with less than a month to go in 2021, we're headed into a huge paradigm shift for next year, and, for and sure. I, I must confess that the decision itself isn't surprising, but the timing is something that is worth looking at because it's giving us three weeks, essentially, to, to come to terms with this. Um, it shows that when the UAE decides to do something, it's going to move quickly. It's going to make it happen. It's not going to dwell on it. Um, and it's, it's going to go forward. It's not short notice. It's agility. That's a word for it. Definitely. Um, there, there, is, there will be a sense of wide eyes and panic. But this is why if we come back to the, to the point you were making and we unpack that of why this is happening, that there are benefits. Mm-hmm. And we are increasingly looking at um, different metrics different paradigm when it comes to business. It isn't just about being in the black, about profit. It's about sustainable growth going forward. It's about well-being. All these things you mentioned. But also, I mean, the UAE needs to be competitive on a global scale to attract talent. And in order to attract talent these days, you need to demonstrate that you, you know, are taking more of a stakeholder perspective. It's not just about shareholders anymore. It's also about the employees, the customers that you're also serving. And the four and a half day work week I mean, studies have shown that around 35 hours is where we begin to peter out on the return on productivity. You know, burnout is more prevalent after you've passed a 35-hour work week. The trials in Japan, Sweden, Iceland, there's one underway in Spain right now around the four-day work week. The returns have largely been really positive on what it means when you reduce working hours for, for a workforce wholesale, that it just leads to a greater sense of well-being. But the other thing, too, is there's a growing sense that the 40-hour work week really doesn't work in modern society, that it's a thing thought up in the early 20th century by Henry Ford. But we're, it's, all, it's all history today. Um, in the 1920s, the five-day work week was introduced, but it was when we were single-income households, when it was a real nuclear family, you know, two parents, two children, one person headed to work each day. The world looks a lot different now. And, you know, rise of technology, rise, rise of the digital nomad, we demand flexibility. And there are a lot of different types of workers who need different types of flexibility. And this, on a public policy level, I think starts to get into that. And it's exciting that it's beyond a pilot, that this is, this is law. And that's, that's cool. It is exciting. It's thrilling to see this sort of happen in real time. Yeah. And, and to also, you know, we're all kind of in it together as well. Um, working out how what this is going to look like, and it's going to be pretty soon in 2022, um, which is not long, not long <laughs> to go at all. Um, but it, but it, it's really we, we've seen an acceleration in the last few weeks. I mean, I, I almost feel like there was a world before COP26 in Glasgow in November, and a world after, and this is very much the world after. And 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 climate change, the debate uh, has been put to bed. It's a, it's a question of how we work through it now. And then we had ADAPEC with a lot of focus on the energy transition, which is actually happening. We had recently a project announced uh, passenger trains by 2030 in the UAE with Etihad Rail. And there was discussion about sort of the billions, hundreds of billions of dirhams of economic benefit related to that. And again, that word of benefit, not profit, not necessarily sales, which is very much a 20th century way of looking at things, but economic benefit and economic impact. And yesterday... I was interviewing the, the president of the Polish State Development Bank, and, and she was talking about how they were looking at their five-year strategy going forward. It was in the wake of the pandemic, and their entire discussion was about impact, about opportunity, about how do you rebuild trust, how do you rebuild social capital. They rarely mentioned profit, but we all understand that to be sustainable, we've got to make money. So it's part of the mix. A four and a half day work, reducing the work week and changing the weekend isn't a signal of like, everybody put your, your tools down. No. Oh, control. And in fact, go out and actually spend money. Domestic tourism then becomes more relevant. Jakinda Ardern of New Zealand, early on in the pandemic, actually pitched to New Zealand, her, her, you know, her voting bloc, that they try out a four day work week as a means of COVID-19 pandemic recovery. 
that the shape of life should actually look different post-pandemic. And you spoke to the energy transition we're in. We're in a recovery transition. All kinds of transitions are happening. The four-day work week is perhaps an ingredient to the recovery recipe, should, should we want it? Should we want to start to think about what life can look like in a world we're trying to now reimagine? And the four and a half day work week here in the UAE does definitely get us a little closer. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. That's it for today. All that remains to thank our production team, Arthur Edison and Aisha Khan, and you all for listening. Do join us again next time.